We're on Rumble, gsradio.net. Uh, so make sure that you're following us there. Listen, me and Jamie want to talk about what's going on currently in Syria, I believe also in Iraq, Jamie. Um, but as of today, we have had 85 strikes from the U.S. Air Force um, in Syria against high-value targets. There's been, from what I am reviewing, and this is from CENTCOM, all right? So we got this today, CENTCOM statement on the U.S. strikes in Iraq and Syria at 4 p.m. Eastern time frame, February 2nd, U.S. CENTCOM forces conducted airstrikes in Iraq and in Syria against Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, their Quds Force, and affiliated militia groups. U.S. military forces struck more than 85 targets with numerous aircraft to include long-range bombers flown from the United States. The airstrikes employed the airstrikes employed more than 125 precision munitions. The facilities that were struck included command and control operation centers, intelligence centers, rocket sites and missile sites, and unmanned air uh, vehicle storages and logistics and munitions supply chain facilities of militia groups and the IRGC sponsors who facilitated attacks against U.S. and coalition forces. Now, I don't disagree with any of that. Iran's not a good guy. Those groups are not good people, and they're constantly trying to kill our people. But, Jamie, there is something about this. I talked to Dave Hodges. We have a source who's in the Pentagon who told us that the intent of these airstrikes was to get rid of, wait for it, rocket missile sites that could strike down one of our aircraft for a push into Iran. There you go. <clears throat> That's interesting. As I've been digging into this story, Doug, that's exactly the conclusion that I've been coming to. Now, they keep talking about Iranian proxies, Iranian proxies, Iranian proxies, right? That's kind of like the drumbeat that they're they're talking about here, and they're hitting in uh, eastern Syria and western Iraq, which those aren't Iranian proxies. That is IRGC, right? That's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. That's that's Quds forces. That's straight up Iranian military, paramilitary, full on operations. And what they're doing there is they're there at the invitation of the host nations, both Syria and Iraq, you know, through Bashar al-Assad and Syria and elsewhere and stuff like that. But think about this competing powder keg of what's going on in the area. We have troops in Jordan. We have troops in Syria. We have troops in Iraq. We have embassies. We have uh, Aramco and other different mega oil producing, uh, private sector oil producing organizations within these nations as well, too, including Northern Jordan, which is what recently got or hit by the drone attack, which is the impetus for all this. But um, it is about taking out the first line of defense for the, you know, surface air missile uh, surveillance type radar tech cybernetic, you know, signals intelligence gathering for the uh, IRGC. And what most people in the West don't understand, because we're pretty um, uh, we, we went full retard in the West a long time ago. Uh, that's a very particular movie quote. We went full retard a long time ago in the West. And nobody even understands the nature of, uh, you know, uh, global strategies, ge geopolitics, geostrategic nature of all these operating entities. Iran is no force to be messed with. Iran as a singular entity, the U.S. could not take on by itself. Now, that may shock the rah-rah Second Amendment QAnon listeners out there, but they don't understand the complete and other intentional degradation of the U.S. military to where we can't even, you look at, well, let's take Gaza for an example. Gaza uh, which is being infiltrated by Israel, which is backed by the intel entire military industrial complex of the West and the U.S. in particular, at this point only has 20 percent of Gaza secure. You couldn't have a smaller, more condensed, more isolated piece of territory ever. Uh, all their subterranean warfare efforts have completely failed. All right, let's pivot over to uh, Ukraine, Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine has the full backing of NATO with, again, the United States as its primary producer. 
primary supplier of armaments and more than armaments, but what most people don't understand on, in the battle space the modern battle space. It isn't about when you hear, oh, you know, 25 Abrams tanks and however many Leopard tanks and then these amount of Javelin missiles and these amount of Stinger missiles and these different, you know, uh, uh, artillery pieces and the 777 howitzers. Like that is the very low level of warfare. That is extremely low level warfare. The actual boots on the ground. The mega component of the warfare is the human and the SIGINT and the cybernetic warfare aspect of it. That is the that is part and partial to the major force multiplier that the U.S. is bringing the beer in Ukraine. And here we are, what, Doug, two years, two and a half, almost three years into that war. And Russia has yet to even put their mainline troops into the fight. They've been utilizing proxies, militias, Wagner Group, all these other different secondary groups, uh, uh, you know, um, Shoot, I can't pour and these other guys like all these different periphery proxies. And we still can't even remotely repel and push back Russia in any way. So now we're going to start a war with what? Well, no, we're already at war with Russia and China by de facto. China has mobilized 300,000 troops into that area. Now we're going to go to war with Iran and Lebanon, Hezbollah, let's not forget Hezbollah, uh, Hamas in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip. This is going to transpire into the West Bank. Now that IRGC, Iran, which we couldn't take Iran on our own, just like we can't fight Russia on our own. And where there's also contingents of U.S. special forces that are now operating in Guyana and Venezuela and Brazil because of the kinetic incursion that's occurring down there. And somehow... In the idiocracy lunacy of the United States of America arrogancy, we think that we're just going to come out unscathed. So this initial assault on Iran at these, um, you know, they have concentric circles of defenses like any nation would have, right, for their primary defensive systems. We're taking out these for the hopes of going straight into the heart of Iran. And, Doug, I think this gets into the key point that you and I want to talk about tonight, that the only way— the only way that this is even remotely a viable option is if it is a foregone conclusion, 100% certified and agreed upon in the back back rooms and the back halls of our, our, of our STRATCOM and all of our other um, central command structures to go ahead and initiate Operation Nitro Zeus. That is the only way that this could be even remotely plausible, even with as delusional because of their pedophilia and their satanic ritualistic abuse and all their freak show nature of our and our total perversity of our government. Even in spite of that, they still wouldn't take this risk unless it was a foregone conclusion to go ahead and initiate that Operation Nitro Zeus. If people aren't familiar with that. Um, they have been trying to get to this point with Iran since 1994 and the Clinton administration, then into the Bush administration, then into the Obama administration. And now there was a hiccup with Trump. Clinton, Hillary Clinton was supposed to carry it on. And then now Biden is fulfilling what it was began in 1994 and solidified in 1996 with Operation Olympic Games. Or I can't remember what the original was uh, that maybe I have it in my notes. There, there was oh, Operation Merlin by Clinton in 2000. Then it went to, to Operation Olympic Games, which is where we got the Stuxnet virus. Is anybody familiar with the T Stuxnet virus? That is the most insane. They say there is nothing in the history of humanity to compare with what happened with that level of cybernetic and kinetic attack on a nation. And now we're rolling in to Nitro Zeus. So that's about the only way. But here's what. And I'm sure we'll get into this. I'm just kind of laying the groundwork for Doug and I to dialogue on this is what the listeners need to know and understand is if we have the cop capabilities with Stusnix and now Nitro Zeus, which is about 10 times worse than Stusnix um, with Operation Nitro Zeus, is that our enemies have that same capability to launch against the continental United States. Now, as we break into what Operation Nitro Zeus actually is, 
That should be raising all kinds of alarms and recalling to mind in the Rolodex of our pea brains about all the predictive programming that has been leading up to this event. Even that most recent movie on Netflix, what is it, Leave the World Behind? Or how about uh, uh, Klaus Schwab warning about the poly crisis? And how about the cyber polygon exercise run by the by the dirtbags at Davos, right? With the World Economic Forum about the next pandemic will be a cyber pandemic. Bill Gates has warned the next pandemic will be a cyber pandemic. All the global elite are warning about a cyber pandemic. Forbes magazine has said, these are the steps you need to take to prepare for cyber Armageddon against the continental United States. Everybody on the face of the earth is openly telling you to your faces what is getting ready to happen next. So this opening salvo with Iran, which is not Iran. Don't forget Gaza. Don't forget Syria. Don't forget BRICS. Don't forget the repudiation of the dollar. Don't forget the fact that Chinese economy is collapsing and Evergrande just got forced to liquidate by the Chinese court systems. Don't forget Russia and China mobilizing troops into uh, what would be uh, Western or, you know, Eastern Europe. I'm looking at the map wrong in my head, right? And so these things are all coordinated to occur at the exact same time to get them where they want to get, which is the great reset, the reset of it all. Doug, Nitro Zeus, man, what are your thoughts? So I, I was made aware of Nitro Zeus several years ago uh, through a good friend of mine uh, who was Army Special Forces, and he told me about this. And I thought it interesting that in one of the latest Transformer movies, one of the bad guy Autobots, whatever Decepticons was named Nitro Zeus. Yeah. And so uh, I was like, wow, talk about uh, a, de a Decepticon, right? A Decepticon. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Yeah. And so, yeah, so Nitro Zeus has been something that's been in the works since around the 90s. And more or less the goal, because I, I don't want to get too far into what the operation is for obvious reasons, Jamie. But um, let's say it like this. We're going to invade into Iran. We're going to destroy the centrifuges. So we're going to softening blow with our U.S. Air Force all the way to Iran. Any SAM site, any missile site, anything that could knock down the ability for us to have our guys jump into Iran. From there, it's the air assets and close air support that would be um, under direct threat. So that all has to be destroyed before the ground troops can come in. So Rangers jump in, SF jumps in. I'm sure the Marines there. I'm sure the Navy's there and uh, Air Force combat controllers and all those guys. I'm sure everybody's there um, because this is this is the way it was discussed with uh, congressional uh, committees is that an acceptable amount of loss. And I talked to a former Navy SEAL today who thought this was just insane. Um, and an acceptable amount of loss is 80% of all of our special operations units would die during this mission. That would be a success. 80%. You don't replace these guys. It takes years to develop these guys and to develop the teams and to trust them and to employ them. So, it, I mean, you take out 80% of our, our special operations guys, people have to now step up into that slot, not knowing what they, these other guys knew and having to be retrained. And it's just, it's a nightmare to have to deal with. So that being said, look at what's going on in Iraq. Look at what's going on with ISIS and the Taliban. Um, does anyone else find it interesting that Iran is attacking ISIS because ISIS was created by the CIA? So yeah. we know right now Iran and Pakistan are beefing a little bit. They actually just had were firing missiles at each other's borders just recently. One was destroying, they were destroying terrorists in each other's countries. All right. Not talking to each other too well. Well, um, with go what's what's now happening in Yemen with the Houthis, with uh, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, um, you know, Afghanistan, Iran, you have the entire Middle East that's in uproar. Mm. And here comes America to stir 
the hornet's nest. Now, you mentioned something a while ago. What we're doing, they can do back to us. Yes and no. And and Jamie knows where I'm going with this. Are they is Iran going to have a massive air assault on us? No, they don't have to, because what they are doing is these countries, these brick nations, countries who want us all destroyed. They've been sending in tens of millions of people who, when they get the phone call, are all going to activate and will overwhelm the system to the point that there's very little that we can do anything about it. These guys are in all different types of positions all throughout the country and working in different workforces. Most likely, they've infiltrated the FBI, the CIA, the DEA, uh, the DIA. They've infiltrated the Pentagon. They've infiltrated the White House. They've infiltrated everything or been let in, Jamie. And so when you have every position of your government function compromised to include the security apparatus compromised, how hard is it going to be for these guys to do what Stuxnet originally did? Stuxnet disrupted the centrifuges, which destroyed some of the centrifuges. Iran hits us back with a uh, a, a completely unknown worm of a, a Trojan horse and worm combined, and it destroyed all of our computers. I mean, it was a it was a good hit. I mean, that was a damn good operation on both sides. When you look at it from an operational aspect, they both worked very well. And this was the 90s. You have no idea what we can do now. And I will tell you this much. The thing that scares me is the artificial intelligence virus that's very rarely talked about. That's funny. I, I literally have on the top of this page of notes, AI enabled viruses. And that's what the the primary uh, the top tier officials in this world, which, by the way, you know, a guy like me, I have a cursory working understanding of this world. I'm not an expert by any means. I just have a working knowledge of basic military strategy in 101, right? So so I, I'm by no means a, a cyber expert, cyber warfare expert. I haven't worked in that world, but I read a lot and I have a working knowledge of how these things are are operationally deployed. But what's interesting is, as they're talking about this Operation uh, Nitro Zeus, let me just explain it real quick. Operation Nitro Zeus, like I said, is 10, 10 times beyond what uh, uh, the Olympic Games, Operation Olympic Games was, which is Stuxnet. Stuxnet, they said, was, was the largest, most insanely combined cyber and kinetic, kinetic action plan ever devised and ever implemented. That was Stuxnet. Now, Operation Nitro, Nitro Zeus is 10 times beyond that. They said when they initiated these thing there is no turning back for the face of the earth it is strategically de designed to infiltrate all forms of of electronics and cybernetics at a level that i can't even conceive of or understand how it does it and it's strategically to make you blind deaf and dumb to any other uh, uh attacks that may be coming your way in a kinetic way so it's to take out your air defenses your uh communications infrastructure your critical infrastructure for uh say the people of a nation state whether it's water treatment power power grid um you know sewer and and all these basic functions of sanitation that are necessary, all supply, supply chains, is to triple it all to make it blind, deaf, and dumb so battlefield commanders can't communicate to each other. And even if they do somehow have a rudimentary analog way of communicating, there is an inability to mobilize any assets because of the virulence of this type of cyber attack. And it can be AI enabled, which means that it is sentient and self-learning while it's inside of a system as a Trojan horse malware type of usurpation of, of how systems are supposed to function. So it can actually be embedded in the system, self-aware, sentient, and learning along the way and adapting. So even if patches are to be put in place in different types of uh, stop losses and firewalls, you know, this thing gets picked up on, which it shouldn't. But if somebody is is uh, does happen to become aware that there's a, a virus operating in the background of all their systems, um, the fact that it, it is adaptable on its own without human intervention means that it cannot be stopped. Right. And that's the big deal about this Nitro Zeus. Here's the crazy thing. 
today, the US, a US official unnamed talking about the B1 bombers going into Iran and dropping bombs on it. You know, he's kind of making this tongue in cheek thing like we you ain't seen nothing yet. This is what's getting ready to go on. He said, our zero hour is very close. Very particular language. We talk about D days, and there is a zero hour in military planning. Zero hour is the hour, the actual hour that an operation or an entire militaristic operation begins, or like a, a campaign, we'll say it's on a bigger scale, like a war campaign. But what's particular about that, that he used that language openly and said, our zero hour is close at hand, is the day that Nitro Zeus is implemented is referred to as zero day and zero hour exploitation. That is exactly the word that is used to describe Operation Nitro Zeus, and it can be in other forms of, of cyber warfare and infiltration in that world. But I found it very very particular, very peculiar and, and suspect that of all the language he could have chose, he specifically made mention to what would be Operation Nitro Zeus, which Operation Nitro Zeus was specifically built up to be implemented against the nation state of Iran alone. The nation state of Iran alone. It was strategically designed for that. And so again, why this is fearsome is because like with Stusnex, all the, uh, all the, um, controllers i i don't even know what to call these guys right the controllers of that world and that and that different type of uh cyber warfare community uh they said that stusnex was supposed to die inside the system so that it would never be trackable it didn't do what it was coded to do so actually was able to be detected and then it was reverse engineered by all the hackers of the world not just the hackers of the world but the nation state cyber warfare warriors of these different major players whether it's russia china iran india has pretty significant one israel is a major technological player you know in that battle space and stuff like that but they have all reverse engineered Stusnex and they can use it at whim whenever they want. What do you think they're going to do with uh, Operation Nitro Zeus or Stusnex alone? That gets into what, what we know, Doug, you and I, about Grid X1 and the Grid X2 drills that were conducted now several years ago. Again, this was all done under the Obama administration where they specifically brought in the cyber warfare contingents of both Russia and China flew them into the United States to participate in a simulation drill, Grid X1 and Grid X2 drill. Go ahead, listeners. You can deep dive on that and chew on that for a little while, where they taught them how to infiltrate our critical infrastructure and our power grid to take it offline through cybernetics and then to incrementally or selectively bring it back online at their whim. I mean, this thing is all part and partial of what's going on with the border, what's going on with the amassing of Chinese troops down there, what went on with Fast and Furious, like what's going on with the spy balloon flying over, you know, Montana and North Dakota and our strate strategic uh, terrestrial based missile missile air systems and missile systems that gets into the firing of 12 missile ears and the fi firing of multiple command structure within our terrestrial nuclear based um, uh, nuclear triad weapon systems up there i mean this gets into the hot mic stuff with governor newsom and the payoffs with feinstein and the payoffs with swalwell or whatever that dude's name is right like it is all coming into a into a convergence right now so this strike on iran because the three soldiers getting killed in jordan is a smoke screen for the bigger agenda of what comes next and let me let me say this real quick though before i hand it back over to you is that I, I remember learning, and it's stuck in the back of my head for the last eight years. Eight years ago, I remember learning from open source intelligence and from whistleblowers that our battlefield commanders in the Middle East were well aware that they were being set up to be used as cannon fodder at a later date at a particular time, that they were not withdrawing from the Middle East, although the cessation of operations already occurred over there, but that they, they were strategically being placed in Syria, in Jordan, and in Iraq, Western and Northern Iraq, on purpose to lead them there as bait, as cannon fodder for the optics that they would need later on when Iran started striking bases in those other Middle Eastern countries on our troops that we left in there. 
And it was brought to my attention eight years ago that the battlefield commanders were well aware of it and that they were actively trying to mount some kind of uh counter. I don't want to use particular language. I almost said some uh to counter to protect themselves in a form of self-preservation for them and for their troops, army soldiers, airmen, Marines, whatever they are, private contractors, all these things, because they knew that our government put them over there and has been leaving them over there and rotating guys out waiting for this day when they could bait Iran and Russia to strike them so they could get the optics to justify what they did today and starting to strike targets on their way to Iran. Doug? Well, you know, it's it's interesting you mentioned the electric grid. Um, the Chinese company, Jiangsu Haoping, uh, they're a transformer company. And they first started delivering the 345 kilovolt large power transformers to utility providers. The first one went to Oklahoma um, in 2010, around the same time as the grid X drills. Right? Yeah. So... It, what what GridX did was it it allowed Russia and China to shake hands with NERC, uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Committee, uh, with EPA, who controls everything with power, and also with the private industry, whom they are heavily invested in now. So you kind of ask yourself, you know, how invested is China in our grid? by billions, billions invested in our grid. They already know, Congress has already found out with some of our large transformers, they're made in China. They got back doors for uh, cyber attacks in them. They can't unplug them and they can't fix whatever uh, glitches are wrong with them. So if they want to be turned off at any point in time, they can be turned off. It, it yeah. is a it's what we call a catastrophic failure. The word that we use in the government is catastrophic failure. The Biden administration is a catastrophic failure, which has caused a failure in many other little different things. Um, our foreign policy right now is to what, Jamie, piss everybody off, start a war everywhere that we can't finish, keep our border open. Um, you know, I, we, we, we bully people, we bribe people, we bomb people, we sanction people. And then, uh, if you say something we don't like, then we start taking your rights away and your amendments away. And we turn the public into public enemy. Number one, we, the people are public enemy. Number one of this administration. There's a reason for that subjugation. They want World War III because they need, for one thing, they need a climatic, catastrophic event that will usher in the Antichrist. Let's all go ahead and throw yeah. that one out. Yeah. I say I say they need a global, collective, conscious, traumatic experience. It's got to be global, and it's got to be so traumatic that the people will clamor for any solution. You don't force it on them. The governments are the central planners of the I don't even want to call it government. The governments, governments are a smokescreen. The central planners of the world, they must have this because if they force it on you, you'll push back. There will be populist uprisings one million fold beyond what's already going on in most of the nations around the world, whether it's in the Netherlands or in France or blah, 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 elsewhere. There's all kinds of mega populist uprisings. Uh, in Hong Kong, we saw that. That was right before the thing was released. And all of a sudden, that populist uprising went away, right? But it's they need this traumatic experience so that we will actually clamor and beg them to implement and to restore order and peace and security. While many are saying peace and security, then the sudden destruction comes upon them. So that is where all this is going. And it's interesting that Klaus Schwab or the World Economic Forum is the one that is not only openly brazenly talking about the great reset which is direct in direct alignment with everything coming out of the deagle report if the listeners aren't familiar with that you can go ahead and dig into the deagle report for 2025 but that they are the ones who are openly talking about poly crises and the cyber polygon 2021 exercise to prepare for this exact scenario this is because out of the ashes which is their 
their Egyptological Phoenix occultic mystery school worshiping nature is that out of the ashes that they create will arise their restructured order of the uh, of humanity, right? Of the face of the earth. They will get the central bank digital currencies, the passports that are linked to your biometric data. There will be a, a unification of 10 super states around the face of the world. No more borders. There will be a the rise of a super religion, a unified type of a hyper spiritual super religion that is a uh, ecumenical in its nature, but ultimately Luciferian in its doctrine, right? And they are going to secure it all, but they must have this war first. So the, the thing that's myopic about most people is they're looking at this government, they're looking at this Biden, Biden regime, and they make it about Biden, which is the most ridiculous thing. Obviously, Biden's a placeholder. He's he's nothing. He's cannon fodder, right? Like has nothing to do with Biden. I don't even like using his name because it's completely irrelevant. It actually has nothing to do with the rhinos that everybody wants to get hung up on. They're completely irrelevant. Has nothing to do with elections and election cycles and getting the right guy in. And it has nothing to do with piss poor foreign diplomacy that we just happen to be pissing off everybody on the face of the earth and creating wars everywhere. This is going exactly according to their plan. There is nothing out of order with what's going on here. Nothing. Every little rub, every little action and reaction, every little Hegelian dialectic and deceptical, decepticon <laughs> dialectic uh, that they're implementing right now is because it is strategically taking us somewhere, leaving weapons in Afghanistan, drawing down strategic reserves of oil, stopping fracking here, stopping the production of lead for bullets here, you know, reducing that here, pushing electric vehicles here, you know, starting a war over there, raising up a proxy here, striking this here, punching this guy in the nose over here, getting him to react. Every this is their big crescendo. It's it must occur. It must occur. On their timeline, I'm not saying that. That's what they say. It must occur within the next one to two years. Otherwise, they're set back another century. So they're going for broke on every level. And this Iran thing, along with, the, uh, you know, the Israel Hamas thing, we've talked about it, Doug, you and I, Psalm 83 war, according to scriptures, and the Ezekiel 38 war. Look at the nations represented in the Ezekiel 38 war. They are led by Persia, which is Iran. And all this conglomerate of Middle Eastern, all the stands, Ubikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, right? Ar Armenia and, and, and Azerbaijan. And then the Horn of Africa with Ethiopia, Somalia, and Eritrea, and Libya, right? And Morocco and Algeria. Algeria declared war in the United States. Most people don't even, they made an official declaration of war against the United States and said they will block the Strait of Gibraltar. And again, most Americans don't even know geography. How radically significant it is that it, they said that they will blockade the Strait of Gibraltar. So right now we have the Suez Canal. We have the Strait of Hormuz. We have the Ben El Mandeb Strait. And now we have the Strait of Gibraltar, and we have the Panama Canal in South America that are all actively, actively being prepared to be shut off all at once, all at one time, under the guise of war. I mean, this thing is huge, bro. It's huge, and people aren't even paying attention to it. And I'll tell you what, the biggest component, Doug, I believe, is cyber warfare. The arrogancy of the West is the dependency on technological uh, nuances, and you turn that off for 72 hours, not to mention six weeks, which is what all the central planners say, six weeks. They will turn it off for six weeks. You're talking about, I believe the DHS projections, it's been a couple of years now since I read them. The DHS proje projections were 20 million dead by suicide in the first three weeks. 20 million dead by suicide. They said 40% of the US population dead in six weeks of the internet or of electricity or whatever, we'll just call it electronics being turned off through cyber warfare, 40%. So what's 40% of 328 million? I don't know, I'm not that good at math, but I know it's a lot. Yeah, it's a, a, a lot, lot. It's, yeah, a, it's a lot, lot that we are completely not ready for. I wanna talk real quick you mentioned Iran. 
Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 34, the judgment on Elam. Who was Elam? Iran. Persia. Yep. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, the prophet concerning Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the mainstay of their might, and I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them to all those winds, and there shall be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall not come. I will terrify Elam before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them. My fierce anger declares the Lord. I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. And I will set my throne in Elam and destroy their king and officials, declares the Lord. But in the latter days, I will restore the fortunes of Elam. Strange. Can the Lord, does the Lord use nations to bring upon his judgment upon other nations? The answer, of course, is yes. Yes, um, unequivocally. Unequivocally. So, Operation Nitro Zeus. We always got to take ourselves out of our American bravado mindset and remember that we serve a holy God and that everything that is being done is because the Lord ordains it, regardless of whether or not you Christians like that or not. It, God really doesn't care about your opinion because He's already wrote it. So, because, man, people are going to argue, people are going to challenge, people are going to go crazy because I said four winds and four corners, and they're going to go flat earth on us. But <laughs> what we, what we got to understand is that we are looking at prophecies being fulfilled freaking left and right. So one thing, it's a great time to be alive. Great time to be alive. We We have a living God who loves us, has not left us, and still fights for us. However, we also need to understand the reality of the time that we live in. Jamie, if the power goes off, are people prepared in America for that? No. And I and I'll say this, Doug, I'm not at all. I'm not. I'm not no. I'm not at all. I don't and I I think it's one of those things that there's no way that you could prepare for it. I mean, you and I, you and I have experienced it for limited times, right? Working in austere environments, right? Non-permissive environments where there's been limited period of time where we don't have access to electricity or, you know, I, I know being on the ground invasion up to Iraq, we would hit different aspects of critical infrastructure. And so it, it is the weirdest thing, by the way, weirdest freaking creepiest thing ever is operating in a super city that has no power on. There is nothing more haunting and more hair in the back of your neck standing up than working through a city like Baghdad where there is not one speck of light. And yet you're surrounded by what would be skyscrapers, you know, multi-story, 10, 20, 30, 50 story buildings all around you. All this hustle and bustle, commerce and businesses and shops and cars and vehicles. Baghdad is a big city. You're talking about the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia, right? In the land of Ur and, and the Chaldeans and all these things. Like, And same thing with what we're talking about with Iran, <laughs> you know, historical Persia. Like these are not Johnny Come Lightly nation states and empires. And to be operating in an environment like that with no with no electricity is insane. Even operating on nods, bro, I, I know you know this. You can be on nods and see nothing but maybe your hand right in front of your face because of the nature of kinetic warfare and the amount of smoke and debris and dust plumes in the air from the different airstrikes and shock and all, right? Whatever kind of language people want to use to visualize it to where even at night, there's no ambient light from the illumination from the celestial host or the moon or anything else to even give you love enough light for your nods to be effective. And so even on your nods, you still feel unbelievably insecure as a very well-trained, very adept war fighter because the electricity is out. So I don't think anybody could adequately adequately be prepared for this. And here's here's my speculation, Doug. I wonder, just just mental gymnastics, right? I wonder if this event that is has high index of su suspicion that's probable to go down here in the very near future. I wonder if this is the hooks in the jaw that drag Gog 
and of Magog and all the hordes, it talks about the hordes with them, to come out to fight. Like they've shown restraint, shown restraint, shown restraint. Think of Russia. Think of like China. Like they're kind of always working in the background, but they've never gone kinetic, right? Like I, Iran has shown unbelievable restraint with what we did with Stusnex and their nation, which was an overact of war. That was a declaration of war years ago that they haven't re responded to yet. I wonder if this is the hook in the jaw and Israel will be the one who implements it and initiates Operation Nitro Zeus that drags the whole world out, in particular, the Islamic world, what we know of as the Arab or the Islamic world, to come against Israel. It will force them to have to reconcile with Israel or to what well, that's the wrong word to deal with Israel, right? It'll force them to. So that's kind of been my thought as I saw this going on with Iran today. I was like, I wonder, is this the hook in the jaw? Is this the hook in the jaw? And, and then in particular, the Leviathan gas fields that are under Israel, right off the coast of Israel, largest energy production thing in the world. We just cut off, the U.S. cut off all the energy to Europe. We cut off Nord Stream and Nord, Short, Nord Stream 1 and 2. We cut off another gas pipeline going under the Baltic Sea. We blew that one up on. We're literally attacking our own allies to make them energy dependent on us and on OPEC instead of pivoting to the BRICS nation. And then we're destroying all their critical infrastructure. Iran is completely self-sufficient. Now we're destroying their critical infrastructure. And here's little Israel who's in the background through Mossad and their different intelligence apparatus and their crazy Canaanitic, Kabbalistic, you know, freak show, mystery school, occultic practices who's sitting on the largest energy reserve on the face of the earth, the Leviathan gas field. I wonder, is this the hook in the jaw that drags them all out? for the last, for this great overthrow and setting the stage for the man of perdition to come onto the scene. Well, I mean, and right now, Israel is recruiting anyone who can fly a plane from the ages of 54 to 55. Oh, no kidding. I didn't know that. For what reason? A suicide mission? Yep. Kamikaze. One way, one way ticket. Are these... These cultures are all about that. Don't think that they're not. They're all about that. Um, they'll do whatever they can to sustain their own living. They're blood but, cults. America's a blood cult. You know, not the people by and large, but the the leadership and the media. They are. Yeah, a they'll blood they'll cult. tell their people, "Hey, go kill yourself for us," while they sit there and eat their lobster and their steak dinners. Yeah. On a so, side note, Doug, mentioning that about the Israelis, it, haven't you found it fascinating that in the last really three weeks to a month, but but even in the very near term, like the last two weeks, how there's been this global military conscription campaign, like all the nations all the in the nations. world are actively talking about conscription, including you know, the United States of America. Yeah, you know, right, right now we're talking about taking the illegals who are coming in and letting them join the military and that's going to be part of how they get their uh their citizenship. citizenship yeah and i i think that that's the play that they're making to diffuse what's going on in the border this whole border crisis is staged i mean it's real but it's intentional right it's we know it's it's real but it's intentional it is really a crisis but it's very intentional and doug you were the one telling me the other day about another migrant caravan that's coming up through central america that's right on schedule for the election cycle to bombard the state of texas to overwhelm them and i believe that one of their they're creating this problem reaction solution right hegelian dialectic on the border with Texas, with this tit for tat, by the way, Abbott is a World Economic Forum globalist, straight up, is playing his part to look like this patriotic rah-rah, Texas secession movement, you know, we'll fight ourselves, you're unconstitutional, we're going to operate on, you know, like, it's, it's gamesmanship. And I believe that they're setting the stage for a concession to be made and the concession will be that all these illegals that are bombarding the border can have citizenship if they get conscripted to fight in world war three and the netherlands is conscripting germany romania kosovo moldavo i mean these are nations that people don't even know where they're on a map which they should right bosnia Herzegovina, the stands the mid all, almost all of europe the uk is talking about it they're handing out world war three pamphlets in sweden uh i think it was finland that bought the um 
uh, potassium iodine tablets to hand out to all our citizens. UKPM is saying, prepare for World War III. You need to have food on hand. You need to have, who was, I think it was the Netherlands commander. You need to have flashlight batteries in a cup of water. That was his suggestion for preparation, right? But they are all actively and through legal frameworks preparing for conscription over the face of the earth. Everybody is. And Americans, you don't think that's going on here? Well, my 21-year-old nephew just got a paper in the mail, basically from, you know, so selective service, whatever. I can't even remember the language. And I've been out of the military too long to make sure that he registers for the draft, for conscription mandated by law. He got that in the mail a couple of weeks ago. So... The U.S. government is actively preparing for that as well, too. So it's going down, man. It's going down. Yeah, and and nobody's going to join the draft. Well, I say that. Plenty of idiots will. Um, but there's a difference between a draft and forced conscription, like how Napoleon forced people, conscripted people. So here's a tactic. Um, let's talk about Napoleon real quick. Napoleon Bonaparte had a internal conflict with the yuppies of his time which would be you know like our leftists basically they were their illuminaries and a very amazing quote that he said that um four four bad remarks in a newspaper or in four different newspapers is more threatening than a thousand charging bayonets all right does that not pertain to today because what he's yeah, talking wow. about is the media, the media, yeah. how the media can paint you. So what he started doing is all these cities that were kind of rising up. You know what he did? Those who rise up against me can script them into the military. Yep. So when you rise up against Biden, here comes the forced draft. You either join the draft or you go to jail or you get shot. Yeah, and if you if you've noticed, Doug, who they're who they're already preparing to, and they're going to do a counter, a counterfeit rah rah Americana patriotic appeal, because guess who will bite onto that? The white, the young white conservative males. That's who they want to go die in the war. Yep, they Fly actually over country. don't want. They don't want the reprobate. They don't want the reprobates going to war. Because they want them to stay here to to finish their um, cultural revolution, right? Their Marxist cultural revolution. And it's not going to be the immigrants by and large, although they'll be cannon fodder to some degree, because they are the replacements to come in that have no national identity. And they're so easily controlled by bread and circuses and by government programs that they will do nothing to you know, upset the boat and upset the status quo. But if you've noticed, there's going to be, they're already starting the slow, soft appeal of patriotic duty to the restoration of America, um, American machismo to the white conservative male populace. That's who they want to go and die by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, millions. They want them all dead. That's who they're gunning for. So I want to bring up something to you, and I don't know how familiar you are with this, but did you hear the latest Senate bill that is going to ban the ability for you to conduct firearms training and also ban militias? No, I haven't heard about it. Oh, this is, this is just a gem of a gem to be given to. Um, hold on, let me find it real quick. So Senate bill banning militias. You can find that at congress.communist.gov um <laughs> here we go <laughs> unauthorized private paramilitary activity oh senate, my senate oh yeah oh oh yeah yeah Jeez. senate bill 3589 bro these dudes want it to make it so that if you and three more people go and train this is the american three this is the german three for those of you who think i'm illuminati i use this a lot <laughs> all right bro you get everybody's like oh doug's a freemason he counts weird I, and i'm like no he's just an idiot i talk with my hands <laughs> don't go live in the yeah. northeast with all the italians it'll drive you insane <laughs> um, stupid. 
So <laughs> look, man, if, if three or more of you go and train together, that's now a felony. No right to assemble. Yep. You cannot have guns. No second amendment. You cannot have a militia. No second amendment, but you know what is allowed. Here's what's funny. What is allowed. What is allowed. Let me find it real quick. Is if you are part of the United States, the National Guard, United States military, National Guard, the reservists, which they call the Naval Militia. Uh, we had to look this up. The Naval Militia is actually the reservist units. Had no idea. Oh, never even uh, heard of that. Never yeah. even heard of that. Any regular organized state militia or any unorganized or reserve militia that's called into service by the governor of a state or the United States. So if you're an, a, a government approved militia, like Black Lives Matter and Antifa, like right. Barack Obama's yeah. whole mindset of having a civilian defense force just as big, just as strong, and just as powerful as the DOD, if you're a, on the approved list, then you're okay. If you're a militia from your town, who's a, just a, a group of men who are gathering together to go and confront some sort of aggressor upon your town, you're now illegal. And you can't Dude, have, it's capacity. Crazy. Yeah. you can't have large capacity magazines. You can't have semi-automatic weapons. You can't have suppressors, night vision, thermal. You can't have body armor. You can't have large caliber uh, weapons. It, it's flint locks, single shot guns. And uh, get this. You're, it will be unlawful for you to publicly patrol, to drill, which means to train, or engage in techniques capable of causing bodily injury or death. You cannot interfere with, interrupt, attempt, or interfere with, or interrupt government operations or government proceeding. Well, hold on. Does that mean we can't protest? Hmm. Yeah, you that, that means you can't. That's cancel culture. One. That means you can't post. You can't say anything. You can't do anything. It's total control mechanism. Hey, get this. Yeah. You. It also be unlawful for you to interfere with or intimidate another person in that person's exercise of any right under the Constitution of the United States. But the, the United States will be able to interfere with and intimidate any person in their exercise of their rights under the constitution. Yeah. Here, here's what, here's my take on that. I, I think that that's, um, it's, uh, what's the word, you know, it's it, that, that, that legislation is not going to have any power. Cause I absolutely am convinced I could be wrong. So that's fine. I can be wrong, but I'm convinced that that won't even get passed because of what's coming next. I truly believe am utterly have such a high index of suspicion that a kinetic invasion of the U.S. mainland is going to occur within the next two years. I, I, I believe that civil war is going to be fomented, just like yep. the visions of Dimitri Duneman or Henry Gruber. I've had my own dreams and visions, right? Lots and lots of people have seen the same thing. Yep. I believe that we are going to see a hardcore, violent civil war erupt in the United States, and it won't be between North and South. It won't be states' rights versus federal government. It won't be based on slavery. It'll be it'll be wickedness versus moralism. It will be liberalism, Marxism, or Luciferianism versus moralism. That will be the clash. It, it, you know, for ease of conversation, we can say conservatives versus liberals, that that will be the impetus of the background of the civil war. And right, which is intentional, it's intentionally being fomented. Obama had one singular role and he played it masterfully. He gets an A plus. He carried out with devotion to duty everything that he was supposed to do to divide and conquer this country and to sow the, the deep seated roots of discord and hatred and distrust that we are now finally seeing ferment unto the poisonous fruit that it's producing. And and I believe that that is what they're trying to get to for the kinetic invasion of the continental United States by majority Chinese troops with a contingent of Russian troops and then fifth column forces, whether it's Hamas, Hezbollah, 
the cartels, which is China as well, too, right? All these different uh, uh, proxy actors which have been coming across the border. We know that they have cruise serve weapons that are staged and direct fire weapons. Doug, you know how nasty it is to try to come up against somebody with indirect fire weapon. An indirect fire weapon system changes the sphere of your battle space because there's no such thing as cover anymore right like it's you you have eliminated the ability to take cover and to be able to repel forces with overwhelming and superior firepower when the time comes when indirect fire and cruiser weapons start getting employed and so this is all in the country this is all being staged this is all happening in real time so now you throw into that component which this isn't Jamie and Doug saying it. This is you can go read all their white papers, all the reports, all their simulations, all their exercises that they are going to take down the power grid and then bring it back online selectively. That word selectively is what is going to cause the greatest bloodshed in American history is that. The power grid will be brought on selectively, and now you're going to get this huge, violent, vile clash of peoples to where we self-eradicate as much as possible before the Chinese come in and take what they're owed as collateral. When their economy is collapsing, they're coming to collect. That's our mineral rights. That's our farmland. That's our uh, our oil reserves, our natural gas systems. That's our fracking systems. That's our deep water ports. That's our manufacturing base, what's left over manufacturing base. But most importantly, it's our fertile soil. They must have the American heartland. They have to have the soil because what most people don't understand about China is China is on the verge of collapse. All the communistic power structure that has been built up for the last 150 years-ish is about ready to crumble because they can't feed their people. Their currency is insolvent. Their economy is insolvent. I don't care what the other you know, pundits out there are telling you. Uh, there's populist uprisings all over the place. They can't kill enough people quickly enough. They can't have enough intelligence apparatus, biometric, you know, social credit score system in place to control the people because they're hungry and they're disenchanted with communism. And they know that if they don't get them fed ASAP, and if they don't alleviate some of their population constraints by uh, re well, I don't know what the right word is by by uh, uh, doing a a population displacement in the U.S. They say they have three hundred million Chinese who have been pre-selected by lottery to come into the United States over the course of nine months to replace the Anglo population by and large, right? And obviously, we're a melting pot, but we'll say Americans, right? To replace Americans in a, over the course of nine months. This is all going according to plan. So this, again, we'll bring it full circle. What's going on Middle East? What's going on in Europe? What's going on in Asia, Southeast Asia? What's going on with in the stands? And then what's going on in the Koreas? And what's going on in Central and South America? What's going on in every strait and every canal and every shipping lane on the face of the earth? What's going on with the supply chains and supply chain disruptions, which is not a disruption, it's consolidation, is all because of the restructuring that's coming. And it will be, mark my words, preceded by a major, major, life-altering, traumatic cyber attack that's going to affect the whole globe. You know, one of the other things that they're going to come after is our women, our children. That's what they've said about the Chinese troops is the women. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Comfort women. Remember that word? Yeah, that means rape yeah. toys. Uh, you look into that, look into that horrible gross term we talk about the human trafficking the sex trafficking um it's going to be in your face the, the, they will bring back slavery they'll bring back reprisal killings look one of the things you can expect when this the stuff starts is some guy to come out to your town square and say hear ye hear ye all listen to me right now these constitutional rights are now suspended First Amendment, right to peacefully assemble, suspended. Second Amendment, right to bear arms, suspended. Second Amendment, right to gather as a militia, suspended. Posse commentatus, suspended. That's all. It'll happen. 
It's happened before, man. It's happened before. We have never had a group of people that are so diabolical be put into a position of power. How the hell they got there, I don't know. That are now in charge of nuclear weapons, of militaries, of law enforcement, of your food, your commerce, your electricity, your communications. Everybody above board who's in charge of the way the the standard American lives is diabolical. Diabolical. We've never had that in American history, ever. So don't be surprised when these people turn against you. They turn against you. Jamie and, and Doug have been warning you. Your government's probably not on your side. They're probably not your friend. Doesn't mean everybody in the government's bad. Because you guys still stuck in the government will fall victim to the same thing the rest of us will. You'll have a choice. Stand on this side of the line or start moving Jews to the ghetto on that side of the line. That's your choice. Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, and I and I think that the control mechanism is going to, again, it's going to be related to the effects of the cybernetic warfare i mean you because most people don't understand because it's a loose language right like that's a very umbrella generalized statement cybernetic warfare cyber attack right uh operation nitro Seuss. but most people don't understand how that trickles down to the and affects you on a on a on a daily level on a very intimate level we're talking about uh anybody that's on any form of medications dead Anybody that's on a ventilator in an ICU, dead. Every child that's in a NICU, dead in 24 hours. All the diabetics, think of how many Americans are diabetic. They must have their different um, medications, whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes, to regulate both their insulin levels and their glucose levels. You're talking about millions and millions of Americans dead. Dead in a week because of diabetes, right? Uh, clean water, sanitation. Most people don't understand. Whenever I teach practical preparedness or family emergency preparedness, number one thing I key in on besides mobility, everybody knows I'm big on mobility and I'm big on night vision, is sanitation. I don't care if you don't own a gun. I don't care if you own a gun. I don't care if you've never fired a gun. You better know how to stay clean. You better know how to deal with human waste in mass you better know what to do with garbage and foodstuffs and clothes and dirty laundries and an infected uh a splinter in your finger you better know and understand how to manage sanitation because when the power goes out or if it goes out there's nothing you can do about that kind of stuff and so the outcome of cyber warfare and cybernetics goes beyond what most people don't understand. All your vehicles are linked in sync to GPS and they all have chips being produced in Taiwan. By the way, Taiwan to this day is still considered Chinese, which is why the whole fight over Taiwan is 90% of all microchips and chip processing comes from Taiwan, the nation of Taiwan at this time, right? That's in everything that we own. I mean, you're talking about all your food gone within three days, rotten, destroyed. If you don't know how to practically prepare for that scenario, it's all done. Anybody who is on a CPAP, lots of people are on CPAPs. You ain't sleeping anymore, bro. Your sleep is done, which means you are no longer effective to anybody because you're in a chronic state of sleep deprivation. Like it's these nuanced attributes of cyber warfare that most people don't understand. We, I mean, the big ones are easy. All your money's gone. All your money's wiped out. You can't pump gas. You have no power and you're afraid of the dark. And there's a boogeyman under your bed, right? Like those are the easy go-tos, but there's these nuanced uh, secondary and tertiary effects of a lack of power that goes beyond comprehension. And don't say, well, I have a generator and fuel. Guess what? I build houses sometimes and work on things in the back country where we run on generators. You cannot believe how much fuel a generator consumes in a single day, a single eight hour day of work, just trying to charge your batteries on your DeWalt or your Milwaukee tools or whatever you're working with. Like you can't even fathom how much, how much fuel that draws. I guarantee you the average American citizen if they have a generator, they have enough fuel for running their generator for four hours a day for about four or five days, and then they're out of fuel. I mean, that's being extremely generous. So this thing is 
bigger than what I think people realize. I guess we can, you know, bring it into summation. What's going on in Iran is not happening in a vacuum. Uh, the fact that they're hitting these targets in Syria and Iraq and potentially Jordan, which is interesting because I know the the uh, Jordanian uh, Royal Air Force did send some jets in uh, sortie along with Isra Israel to strike these targets in Syria and Iraq. So I'm not sure about the nuances of that relationship. I know that Jordan in particular is mentioned in biblical eschatology as being, we'll say, an ally. Like somehow Jordan always remains an ally is the way it reads in scriptures all the way up through the end. Actually, even it talks about the two wings of an eagle being given to what is the woman. Some people speculate that it's the church. Some people speculate it's a Jewish remnant, whatever. There's all kinds of speculation. We we won't know till it happens that they are preserved in Jordan for a time's time and half a time for three and a half years of the tribulation. So I don't know what's going on with Jordan. They're a very unique outlier uh, with when you're looking at it from a biblical worldview. But what's happening, what's getting ready to happen with Iran is is all going according to plan. And that's why be forewarned, listeners, for what comes next. Operation Nitro Zeus on them, which means a similar viable operation against us, right smack in the middle of the civil war, right at election cycle, right at tensions high, right at 6 million immigrants across the border, 10,000 Chinese military men a day are coming across the border, documented, documented by DHS, Border Patrol, and investigative journalists. This isn't speculation. This isn't sensational. This isn't hyperbolic. This is documented 10,000 Chinese military age fighting men a day, no women, no children coming across that border. So you fill in the blanks. Where does this go next? We can see the handwriting, the handwriting on the wall. So it's important to not be caught off guard and then caught into the firestorm of the emotionally predatory nature of the media. Even the truth or media do not get sucked in to the armchair quarterback truth or reality of how they spin and twist and manipulate all this stuff because they don't <laughs> they don't have a clue. They've never done anything but sit around and listen to podcasts and then regurgitate stuff. Right. Like we're trying to tell you in an emphatic way, in a practical way to be aware of all the mechanisms that are at work here and the machinations that are at work so that you are not caught unaware by these things as they continually transpire and progress and escalate. Doug? Uh, look, uh, you guys know I, I'm pretty real when it comes to sharing my opinion. Um, I'm going to say what I've been harping on. You should probably take some training. Probably. Probably learn how to shoot, probably learn some tactics, probably get on the treadmill, start eating some salads. Some of us, uh, I'll raise my hand at that. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I'm, I'm 315 pounds, but, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm fluffy. I'm not fat, but you know, the oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you're pleasingly plump, bro. You're pleasingly plump. That's hey it. man, I benched 495 twice, two days ago. I'm, I'm a different kind of fat. So yeah, that's true. You know, it's um, look. I mean, it's it's being honest with people. If I posted something that had aliens, giants, nephilim found in caves, ancient tablets that aren't going to help you out with anything, a uh, ooh and a an ah, we would get thousands upon thousands of people watching this and sharing this. But if I say training, everybody goes, "Oh, there's Doug talking about training again." I don't, I don't need to worry about that because I've got 20 AR 15s in my safe. I'm, I'm okay. All right. Talking to a Navy SEAL today. Um, uh, he's the owner of unit solutions. We're going to be getting some of his simunition rifles, amazing equipment. I don't get paid to say this unit unit solutions. Go look at their unit four rifles. If you want a good training rifle without wasting your ammunition, probably go visit those guys. Um, but uh, we were laughing about how, People in the prepper community, because we're both Christians, and uh, you know, we're like, you know, people in the prepper community, man, in the red pill community, they're like, oh, I'm ready. I got my, all my prepper gear and my prepper this, and and what you did is, if you don't know how to defend it and you're not in good shape, you created a Walmart for people. You created what we <laughs> call a resupply point. 
Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a resupply rally point. It's like, Oh, sweet. Thank you. You know, and you, you just hit on it, Doug. I could not harp enough on physical fitness. Like what most people don't understand is the physical fitness aspect translates to emotional fitness and emotional fitness is crucial. Emotional well-being and resiliency is something that I could never speak to enough. You know, when I go travel around speaking at different things, it is it is so critical. And so it's like there's practical things that you can be doing right now. Training with Doug and with uh, American Vindicta Solutions and and uh, and whoever, what I don't care who it is. Yeah, yeah just go get with training, Doug, support him. But I don't care. Like, do something, you know, right? Do something. And, and the and the other big thing besides the training, the physical fitness, which is training, right? And then practical training for for defensive measures, is you gotta get food, listeners. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Like, like the last thing you want to do is be caught up in the melee with everybody else who was not willing because of fear of looking foolish or because of love of the world or the things of the world, because they didn't want to look like an idiot or they want to allocate their resources to uh, their 1500 apps on their phone, but not even one ounce of money to have an, at least a month's supply of food. They're going to be cannon fodder in a, in a, in a cosmic battle that they don't understand. So it is critical to adequately prepare now they shut this cyber down ain't nothing happening you're not getting fuel in your car you're not getting food you're not getting groceries you're not getting anything you're getting sleepless nights that's what you're gonna get and so what, again go what's, ahead what sucks is just i'm jaded all right i've been jaded since i've been in the marine corps so don't pay attention to doug and his jadedness but it is frustrating to harp on training physical preparedness men Men, the men folk, you're going to be doing the fighting unless you want the women to fight for you, men. Because most of the women contact me, Doug, when's your next training course? We had a woman, yep. you've seen her twice, Miss Janine, three times she's been at our course and she's in her mid-70s. Yeah. You can't get men to show Dude, up. When when I was hosting courses, when I was, when I was teaching different courses around the country, I would say it was 70% women. Yeah. Because their husbands weren't doing anything proactive. So by default and out of fear, they're willing to do whatever it takes to learn how to train because the men of this nation are complacent slobs. They're say nothing's in do, but they watch MMA and they watch pro sports. So apparently they're they and they drink Bud Light. We all know what that means, right? So apparently they're mainly because they can drink Bud Light and watch other guys get in the ring and watch other guys slay their bodies and discipline their bodies and watch other guys do these things. And, and apparently that's now the definition of manhood. So yeah, Doug, I I I get it, man. I mean, it when I was um uh, doing combat pistol, combat rifle, different stuff like that. Uh, teaching family emergency preparedness, it was the majority was middle aged women because they knew nobody else was going to help them, and yeah, they were they were the most proactive group of all. It's sad, man. I've had a lot of women, like single women with children, reach out. Doug, can I come take some of your training? Can I bring my kids with me? Yeah, absolutely. We don't do live fire. It's a family friendly environment. Come train with your kids because. We'll put you into the scenario where you can evacuate your kids. Yeah, you have to protect them. Yep. Yeah, I mean, look, we'll teach you, but even when Jamie's there, if he's not there, we'll teach you everything we know. We're really not making a lot of money off of this. Uh, it would be great if we could, but, you know, right now the Lord sustains us. Um, and, and we live off of freaking donations for the most part. So we do our best to put the training on and and not go bankrupt at the same time. But that's what God's put on my heart is to do that because it's coming. Whatever is coming, it is right at our doorstep. Some people it's say here. It's, yeah, here. it's here, man. Some people say it's here. Some people will spend $5,000 to go to a, a freaking two-day conference to listen to your favorite speaker and get his dang autograph because you idolize all these people. They 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 feed your, your, your inner need to understand more information and to tickle your science fiction uh, brain, but you do nothing to feed your body and your soul half the time. And uh, when things get really bad, you're going to do a lot of very strange things to feed yourself. Just research World War II if you need to have any further information on that. But it's okay. 
It's okay. I can be the complainer in chief over here. I'm not here to make friends with people. I'm not here mm-hmm. to pat Christians on the head and tell them that you're all doing good. We, we, we all should be slaying our bodies in the gym or on the, on the street one way or another, getting in shape. We should all be praying to God every day and thanking him for just the breath we get, but people grow complacent. You know why I'm not complacent? I've been to war. War sucks. Don't ever want to be there again. Don't ever want to see that again. Don't want my kids there again. There's nothing glory uh, or glorifying about it. And all these guys who run around and rah, rah, glorifying uh, war and, 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 and blood and brutality, you ain't been there. You ain't seen it. Stop faking it. Nobody wants to put their kids in that. But guess what? It's coming whether you like it or not. So go ahead and don't get trained and get your kids put into it. And then start researching what's happening in Ukraine. Research what happened to all those families in Israel as Hamas came to beat their damn doors down. Do we need to rerun the pictures from October 7th? No. People in America, you are you you, you have this uh this insulation called the Pacific and the Atlantic. And until it's right in your face and you actually have to deal with the problem, you'll ignore it. Just like how many Americans will sit there and watch a woman getting raped on a on a, a, a subway train in Philadelphia, and they'll all film it. Oh, look, that poor woman, someone should really do something about this. Can't wait to put this on Twitter and Instagram and get a few <laughs> crazy, likes dude. out of it. Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, so, and again, that goes back to Ezekiel 38 and 39, talking about the jaws, the hooks being put in the jaws of their mouth. And it says, and also at that time, they will come against the land of unwalled villages who sits at ease. You know, and you look at Mystery Babylon, who's so arrogant, United States of America, that says, I'll never be a widow. I'll never see harm. Like, like, what are you going to do? We're untouchable because we're America. And that arrogancy is exactly why it will happen in a single day and a single hour as God has foreknown it to happen. Single day, single hour, I saw the smoke arising from all of our cities and all the great merchants of the world weeping that there's nobody anymore to buy their cheap junk in mass. Yep. So, yeah, yep. it is. Well, look, at in closing, I- ignore my complaints and my frustrations and ramblings. I'm just some crazy Bro, I want to complain that I want to complain about how quick your hair grows. Because it's like you could already almost get a little man bun going. Oh, I'm losing already. mine, and you're growing yours. Like it ain't right. Well, some of us have good genetics. I'm three fifteen. I can still see my abs. So you're welcome. But look at this feminine figure I have compared to yours, bro. Like if you grow the beard out, on. I've told you, man. When you grow the beard out, you start developing muscle. It's like this natural. Oh, thing is that happens. how it works? Oh, That's okay. how it works. I'll That's try. how it works. I'll try it. I'll, I'll send you a book. Uh, Tim's writing a book. I'll send it to you when he's done. <laughs> yes, perfect. <laughs> hey, look, um, here's one thing I want to say to everybody. Try to have fun <laughs> a little bit in your life. Um, yeah, there's a lot of serious stuff going on right now. All right. Yeah, you should be preparing. You should not be in a frantic and a panic and you should not be in fear. However, be serious with your prayer life just as serious as you are with your finances. Some of us are not that serious with finances. Some of us are not that serious with our prayer life. Get right with God while we have the time. Enjoy your family in this great country while you got the time and pray for this country. People have been saying, you know, our country's Babylon. It's wicked. We shouldn't be praying for it. No, you should be. You should always be praying to the Lord for your people, for your country to intercede. Abraham stood in the face of Jesus and interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, what right do you not have to intercede for America?